This is ABC 7 News at Noon. There was a dramatic house fire in Richmond, and the work crew that happened to see smoke are now heroes. We've got that story coming up. I'm Susan Farley. Also coming up, the Maine Department of Education has removed a video from its website after it was used in a political ad targeting Governor Janet Mills. We'll explain what that's all about. And President Biden is making his first trip to Asia since taking office. We'll look at his itinerary and objective along with the rest of our stories. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. First, the weekend is looking pretty good as we check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Happy Friday, Devin. Hey Susan, happy Friday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Alrighty, so we had some fog issues earlier this morning, not very widespread, but the recent visibility maps showing things have been improving for us, so we don't have to worry about any more fog that may have developed this morning. Well, now our focus turns to another small craft advisory that's in effect until 11 a.m. on Saturday because of gusty winds again with another system that will be moving through. We'll actually pull this map further down to the south and west to see if we can get these to pop up for you here, and this will last till about 8 a.m. further down to the south and west. But if you're wondering what these alerts are, these are actually heat advisories that are up. Of course, we have a nice little uh, warm spell that be moving in rather soon. All right, temp, all right, look at the radar right now. We are watching again some clouds moving in. We'll hold on to those clouds for most of the daytime today, though. Maybe a few breaks in the clouds during the afternoon period as we get this away. So, intermittent clouds and sunshine will be possible, but an overall decreasing clouds expected later on the day. We'll get all this out of here and things will get pretty good for a while, but more clouds and more fog on the way later on tonight than by sometime tomorrow and tomorrow night. We'll have to watch for a little bit of rain. Otherwise, so things looking pretty good at this point, though. Winds will start to increase overall later on tonight and tomorrow. And that is why we do have that small craft advisory that is currently in effect. So for today, though, the morning fog is going away, decreasing clouds later in the afternoon. Highs in the lower 60s and south wind at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Rain showers do begin tonight. Temperatures in the lower 50s areas of dense fog possible late. South wind at about 15 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. A mixture of clouds and sunshine. Temperatures in the 60s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. A dramatic fire rescue in Richmond. A CMP crew and neighbors had to coax a woman out of the window and onto a ladder in the only room that hadn't caught fire yet. Brad Rogers spoke with CMP workers who were behind the rescue. These CMP linemen were wrapping up their day in Richmond <coughs> when they smelled something burning and saw smoke. It was coming from the distance right there, just huge black pillow of smoke. They followed the smoke to this lakefront home on fire. We got down there, the flames were blowing out of the the windows and onto the deck. I yell, is anyone there? And then the son was there and he's come over here and he's in the corner of the house. Lineman Jeff Dyer Jr., Adam Dewan and Carl Urquhart helped him down off the roof. Then the rescue got more intense. He said, my mother, my mother, she's still in there. And that's, we grabbed that, he grabbed that ladder, I grabbed the other end and we ran around. We see his mother in the second story window and uh, the woman is in sheer panic. I mean, the flame is directly under her. We're trying to get her on the ladder. The sun's up the ladder, trying to save her. With flames shooting out the window and the floor below, they rushed to save her. So we knew that she probably didn't have much time. She struggled to transition from the window to the roof and then to the ladder. Neighbor Martin Noss says she started to climb down in bare feet. Flames were literally uh, encircling her feet at that point. And then she just kind of slipped and the CMP guys uh, were right at the bottom. She ended up falling down the ladder a good 20 feet and luckily Adam, Carl and I were there to brace the fall and we caught her. What these guys did and, and were able to, to jump in and help for this family makes me extremely proud of all of our field workers. She didn't have much time left. It was about four minutes later and that building was completely inundated with flame. So uh, yeah, she didn't have much time. I'm just so happy we saw her in the window because I don't know what would have happened if she wasn't in the window. That homeowner is now at Maine Medical Center being treated for burns to her feet and legs. The hospital says she's in fair condition. Three people have been indicted in connection with two homicides in Washington County. 36-year-old Darren Laney Jr. was indicted for murder back in March. Maine State Police responded to a stabbing incident on Sunshine Lane in Big Lake Township. They found 62-year-old Darren Laney Sr. dead at his home. A neighbor said both men had lived together there for almost 20 years. 
The Washington County Grand Jury also indicted 38-year-old Donnell Dana and 38-year-old Kaylee Brackett for murder. Both Dana and Brackett are from Perry. They're accused of killing 42-year-old Kimberly Neptune inside her Perry apartment back on April 21st. The Maine Department of Education has removed from its website a video containing an LGBTQ lesson plan for kindergarten students that was the subject of a Republican ad targeting Democratic Governor Janet Mills. The ad accused the governor of spending $2.8 million to create, quote, radical school lessons for the youngest children in public schools. The Department of Education quickly removed the video lesson plan after reviewing it. A spokesperson for Mills said Thursday the governor was not aware of the video and agrees with the Department of Education's decision to remove it. Republican candidates stopped by Dysarts on, ba on Broadway Thursday for a campaign event with residents from the area. Both candidates are looking to take back their previously held seats. Paul LePage is running against Governor Mills, while Bruce Poliquin is looking to unseat Democratic Representative Jared Golden. Both spoke about changes they'd make right away if they were elected. Suspend the fuel tax. Suspend the tolls. That would add an awful lot of money into the economy. Lower the cost of food. We're going to reopen our supplies of uh, natural gas and oil and gasoline and diesel that's refined and lower the price. Bruce Pollockham will face off against Liz Caruso on primary night for the Republican nomination. Former Governor Paul LePage has no Republican challengers. The primary election will take place on June 14th. President Biden is making his first trip to Asia since taking office. With the war in Ukraine continuing, the alliance between South Korea and Japan is in focus as the region monitors the ongoing threats from China, Russia and North Korea. Fox News correspondent Caroline Shifley reports from Washington. On Thursday, President Biden began a six-day trip to South Korea and Japan to meet with Indo-Pacific leaders about trade in the global economy. But his strongest message may be a warning to China to stay out of Taiwan and not to take cues from its ally, Russia. We have to stop the Russians um, in Ukraine um, it's by supporting the Ukrainian government to push Russia out so that China doesn't get any ideas about what they can get away with with Taiwan. Taiwan considers itself a sovereign nation, but China views it as a breakaway state. Last year, China increased its combat aircraft flights over Taiwan, then last month held military drills there. More tough talk. More airspace incursions, more evidence of their utter disregard for the rule of law. Discussions on North Korea are also on President Biden's agenda as suspected COVID cases there explode and its rogue nuclear program expands. White House officials warn Kim Jong-un may be planning to launch another missile test in the coming days. We are preparing for all contingencies, including the possibility uh, that such a provocation would occur while we are in Korea or in Japan. White House officials traveling on Air Force One said President Biden has no plans to meet with China's president on this trip, but the two may talk in the coming weeks. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, Maine teachers came together yesterday at the Augusta Civic Center to discuss financial literacy education for children, including as young as kindergarten. We'll have the details when we return. We'll be right back. Q106.5 is Maine's number one for new country. The biggest country stars with their biggest songs and more fun with Scott Miller and Cindy Campbell on the Q106.5 Morning Show. Download the Q106.5 app and listen at work. Q106.5. On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Belfast, is sponsored by Central Maine Denture and licensed insurist Patrick Allen, creating smiles with private care and premium service. The Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store, established in 2014. Visit us for a free ranch tour to meet the alpacas or shop in our store downtown on the Harbor Walk in Belfast. And Vinolio, a mainstay olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and specialty provisions shop lodged in charming downtown Belfast, Maine. Did you know you don't have to be 65 years old to qualify for Medicare and Medicaid? Many people who are already on Medicaid also qualify for a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan which means you can start taking advantage of all these benefits right now. A $0 or low monthly plan premium, preventive and comprehensive dental coverage, hearing coverage, vision coverage, and prescription drug coverage with free home delivery, plus extra benefits like free over-the-counter health care items, free transportation, free gym membership, home-delivered meals, 
and WellCare's telehealth services, which include online doctor visits and a 24-hour nurse advice line. If you know you're eligible or think you might be, call 1-844-918-0047. We'll send you our free Medicare all-in-one guide or visit enrollwellcare.com to enroll now. WellCare, it's Medicare done well. Q106.5 is Maine's number one for new country. The biggest country stars with their biggest songs and more fun with Scott Miller and Cindy Campbell on the Q106.5 Morning Show. Download the Q106.5 app and listen at work. Q106.5. Watching ABC7 Bangor. More than 80 teachers came together yesterday at the Augusta Civic Center to discuss financial literacy education. AJ Douglas talked to educators who say it's never too early to learn these financial skills. Well, it's definitely going to be something that they're going to see every day of their lives. It's going to be something that um, they're going to need to pay bills, they're going to be bu buying things and purchasing things online. Educators came together to network and trade best practices to continue teaching students from kindergarten to high school level. The Maine Jumpstart Coalition provides training resources to help maintain statewide teaching requirements. President Mary Dyer says young learners should be exposed to financial literacy concepts. Delayed gratification, learning about the power of giving, um, a little introductory lessons around savings and, you know, the importance of savings. You can really begin those early lessons as early as kindergarten. I feel like I need to help build that foundation so when they do get into um, financial education classes in high school, they have a foundation and they have some of that background knowledge. Samantha Dross teaches social studies and personal finance to 12th graders at Central Aroostook High School. She says a majority of her students come from low-income families and have little access to financial education. They move on into getting out of school and on their own, really being able to understand debt and being able to understand their bills and how to get out of debt or not to have it in the first place is a really big challenge for the kids. She says the best reward is seeing the progress in her students. I had a student who said if it wasn't for you the other day, I would not have been able to understand what it meant to take out a loan for a new vehicle. And it's great to hear those things. They're really making connections. Jumpstart Coalition invites more educators to log on to mejumpstart.org to get access to free teaching resources. In Augusta, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. The city of Belfast has a new police chief. Bobby Cormier was recently sworn in for the vacant position. The position was previously held by Deputy Chief Dean Jackson in an interim role. Cormier says he's been a police chief for around four, 39 years, including experience in Los Angeles, California, 14 years as the police chief in Tilton, New Hampshire, and the time as interim chief in Hartford, Vermont. He says he's looking forward to meeting everyone in the community. For me, there's no problem too large or too small. You know, sometimes people are afraid to call about the little things because they think we're too busy. And I'll be honest with you, all those things are important to me. Cormier was unanimously recommended to the position by a hiring committee that included Belfast first responders and city officials. A luxury campground is opening its doors in Tremont. Brooke Riley gives us the tour. A new type of campground is ready to host guests in Tremont. We've created what we call the village and um, we wanted guests to be able to come here and feel like they've gone into a different world. The village at Acadia Wilderness Lodge is home to eight yurts, each with a living room, kitchen, bathroom, two bedrooms, and a loft, along with a private outdoor area. We tried to create an environment that's very inviting, very comfortable, feels like you're connecting with nature, that you're outside, you're outdoors, um, but you're still comfortable inside. In the middle of it all is an outdoor space for guests to play lawn games. Families can get together and play Connect Four and play cornhole and 
um, outdoor ping pong. Kenya Hopkins' mother-in-law, Becky Hopkins, says the land was gifted to her son James from her late father, who told him he could do whatever he wants with it. James thought about selling it, and then he just couldn't let go. And he said, I want to do something extraordinary with it. And being extraordinary means being able to come home. And so this has allowed him to come home. The project has been about four and a half years in the making. Kenya Hopkins says turning the land into the campground did not come without hurdles, as their initial application for more than 100 sites was denied by the town. We found a way to accommodate tourists, respect Mother Earth, respect nature, and um, you know, do it in a way that is very um, um, considerate um, to the town. She says they have more land they would like to utilize, but the request is facing opposition. We've been working with the town for the entire process, and so we're going to continue to do that. Um, we're going to be continue to be um, gracious to our neighbors and, you know, make sure we listen to concerns from everyone. Becky Hopkins says their goal is to ultimately give guests a space to enjoy family time. The hustle and bustle is kind of gone. From you know, you can go to Bar Harbor during the day and have fun, and then you come home and just settle in and relax with the kids and have a fire. The first guests will be checking in on May 27th, and they plan to be open through the fall. In Tremont, Brooke Riley, ABC 7 and Fox 22. There is currently a three-night minimum stay, and those interested in booking a trip can visit AcadiaWildernessLodge.com. Now with Friday's business news, here's Leo Jonathan. Stocks and bond yields continue to fall. The S&P 500 coming close to bear market territory. All three major indexes are down on track for losses of at least 2.9 percent this week. Earnings reports from Walmart and Target are adding to concerns. Spirit Airlines board is rejecting JetBlue's takeover bid, backing instead a merger with Frontier Airlines. That deal would create the fifth largest U.S. airline. Spirit shareholders will vote next month. Home prices hit new highs and mortgage rates are surging. Sales of existing homes down for the third straight month in April. Prices up 15 percent last month, and a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage is above 5 percent for the first time in more than 10 years. More buyers are now choosing adjustable rate mortgages. And Ford is recalling 40,000 large SUVs after reports of fires under the hood. The recall includes 2021 Ford Expeditions and Lincoln Navigators. Ford advises owners to park outside. I'm Leo Jonathan with Friday's Business on ABC7. Coming up, young moose in the Maine woods are dying at an alarming rate. When we return, wildlife managers will explain why they think it's happening. We'll be right back. Just past the intersection of Routes 2, 7, and 100 in Newport, you will find mouth-watering food at the Newport Diner. We serve breakfast and lunch Tuesday through Sunday from 6 to 2. Come and enjoy our scrumptious homemade menu items in an inviting, cozy, and relaxed atmosphere. On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Belfast, is sponsored by Renew Me, a thoughtful and intentional way to care for yourself. Come and be renewed at our beautiful location on Main Street in Belfast. Home Supply Center, a hardware and houseware store located in the heart of downtown Belfast. We are the problem solvers. Stop in or call today. And Comfort Shoes and More. See us for quality name brand shoes and your perfect fit. Comfort Shoes and More, Newport. When Moosehead Trail Home and Heart wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Want to help keep your neighbors warm? Moosehead Trail Home and Heart is looking for HVAC technicians. Apply today at Moosehead Trail Home and Heart in Abbott or on our website. This isn't your parents' photo booth. Premier Limousine and DJ presents the latest in photo booth technology with the all-new 2022 Air Booth. Print out everyone's pictures in beautiful full-color photos and have them sent directly to your phone. The new Air Booth is available for weddings birthdays, class reunions, anniversaries, and corporate events with some of the best, most fun props around. You can book the air booth, limousine, and DJ services separately or take advantage of our very popular package deals. Contact us at Premier Limousine and DJ. At Hashi's Auto Enhancing, our focus is on the appearance, longevity, and value of your vehicle. Does your undercarriage look like this? You can go from this to this. And if you have a new vehicle, you can avoid this. Our annual undercoating service will add years of life to your vehicle. At Hashies, we also do rhino linings. We can rhino rocker panels, bumpers, trailers, side-by-sides, and more. We take pride in making your ride shine inside and out. Book one of our detailing packages. Bring your ride to us to protect your investment. 
Think premium can't be capable? Think again. The first ever GMC Terrain AT4. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on GMC Terrain models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get an additional 250 purchase allowance. Infestations of ticks contributed to a record high death rate for young moose tracked by Maine wildlife managers. Last winter, the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife collared 70 moose calves in remote parts of the state. 60 of them had died by the beginning of May. The 86 percent mortality rate was the highest since the agency started the tracking survey. Lee Cantor, a biologist with the Department of Wildlife, says the winter ticks are to blame for the <clears throat> the worsening of the tick problem since the areas of the northern U.S. and southern Canada that moose call home. The Eastern Area Agency on Aging has partnered with Shaw's and Humana to collect pet food for their Furry Friends Food Bank. The agency is primarily asking for wet pet food and cat litter. Donations can be dropped off Saturday at 353 Main Street in Bangor from 9 a.m. to noon. Executive Director Rebecca Kirk says for some elderly community members, their pet may be the only access to companionship. She says saving on the cost of pet food could help them with their own personal food insecurities. For a lot of us, I think we consider the pet to be a part of our family, but as we age and our other family members go about their way, a pet can become our entire family. And when we can't care for them in the way that we want, it's almost heartbreaking. For more information about upcoming events and how to donate, log on to eaaa.org. From 2018 to 2021, seizures of fentanyl containing medication increased dramatically. With more, here's ABC's M. Wynn. Researchers from New York University wanted to understand more about the increased rate of drug seizures containing fentanyl. So they looked into using a national database at high drug trafficking areas in the U.S. from 2018 to 2021 and assessed the rates of prevalence of drug seizures containing fentanyl. They found that seizures of pills containing fentanyl were nearly 9.5 times higher and seizures of fentanyl powders were nearly 3.5 times higher in 2021 compared to 2018. The researchers concluded that of different substances brought on the street, there is an increased risk of unintentional exposure to fentanyl. Health professionals recommend that people solely rely on their doctor for medication prescriptions and reach out to them with questions surrounding medications. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Do you have trouble hearing conversations? Are you constantly asking loved ones to repeat themselves? Do you miss out on discussions or talking with friends? Then you would benefit from nano hearing aids. Don't waste thousands of dollars on expensive hearing aids or settle with the frustration of cheap amplifiers. Right now you can get two revolutionary nano CIC recharge hearing aids, regularly $794 for just $297, or opt in to our payment plan of four easy payments. I love how affordable the nano hearing aids are. Compared to some hearing aids, they're as much as three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. do not be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. It has rechargeable technology that many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Well, these nano hearing aids are fantastic. They're affordable, they're easy to fit into the ear. And what really impressed me is I'm hearing things I haven't heard in years. Our friendly operators are standing by to take your order. 800-820-2755. The CIC Recharge offers superior noise reduction and a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Best of all, they are incredibly affordable. And if you call now, we'll add a portable charging case and ship your order absolutely free. I love how they feel. They're very light. I don't even know they're there. You know, I've used other hearing aids before that were bulky. These are light and easy to use, too. Stop missing out on important conversations or wasting thousands of dollars on expensive hearing aids. Order now and you'll get two CIC Recharge hearing aids and a portable charging case for just $297. Or opt into our easy payment plan. 
and your order ships free. Supplies are limited, so don't delay. Better hearing is just a phone call away. 800-820-2755. Again, that's 800-820-2755. The Cat Ferry service between Bar Harbor and Nova Scotia is officially back up and running. Bar Harbor Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Alf Anderson says the service moved down to the Portland area in 2009, which was disappointing for people in Bar Harbor. Anderson says the cat leaves from Yarmouth, Nova Scotia at 9.30 a.m. Atlantic time and from Bar Harbor at 3 p.m. Eastern time. The voyage takes about three and a half hours each way. He says having convenient transportation for Canadian visitors will help boost Maine's economy. We definitely get lots of visitors who come in and shop and uh, spend, spend some nights at our hotels and uh, get out on the water, do some activities. Um, and then they, they spend some time around the rest of the state as well. So it's, it's going to be good for everyone uh, to have that visitation back. Um, and we do know that a lot of folks from here in Maine and around New England uh, love to do sort of the reverse. They, they come up to Maine, spend a few days, uh, do some hiking and experiences in Acadia National Park. Uh, and then they take the ferry up to, to Nova Scotia and spend some time up there. So. Um, it's, it's really just a great way to connect uh, two wonderful vacation destinations. The ferry will be running four days a week from now until October 10th. It will increase to seven days a week starting later in June until the day after Labor Day. Well, it's finally Friday. Let's check out your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? All righty, TGIF, your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, we had some fog earlier this morning. The visibility level is looking pretty good by this point, so we don't have to worry about that, but we are watching some clouds that continue to move in. On top of that, watching the wind, we have small crowd advisories in effect. We're right until about 11 a.m. on Saturday for some areas, so hold this matter further off towards the north and some of these also last until about 11 a.m. We're going to try to get you the other one to the south. It looks like it does not want to pull up right now, but that one will last until about 8 a.m. as we head towards tomorrow. Otherwise, though, clouds moving in from the northwest to the south and east. We'll keep that going for parts of the daytime today before more sunshine arrives later on. But we are watching another system moving in from the west to the east, so the break in the clouds will be very short-lived as more clouds and even some fog begin to move in. On top of that, even some rain showers that will be on the way. Wave heights are low for us for now, but you can tell they're not very low further down to the south. Some buoys reporting seven feet, but for us only at about one to two feet at this point, though. Those gusty winds will be increasing later on today and tonight with some gusting up to 15, even 20 miles per hour at times. And we'll keep that going through the morning period tomorrow before the small crowd advisories begin to get dropped. Our average high is 67 degrees. We'll be in the lower 60s today. Now pulling back Saturday. Now thing will be in the middle 70s overall and lower 80s on Sunday before we start cooling things off a little bit by next week and at the upper 60s to lower 70s. So future cast, we're getting all these clouds out of here. It's a lot of sunshine later on in the afternoon. Watching for more fog and more clouds during the overnight period with on and off rain showers as well. We'll watch for chances for rain showers and thunderstorms later on in the evening period, though late afternoon to the evening as our next system begins to approach. And those clouds and thunderstorm chances will last through parts of Sunday morning. How much precipitation could we see? A decent amount overall between now and Monday, maybe up to an inch possible before things begin to back off. So a forecast coming up for today, 63 degrees, the morning fog getting out of here, now decreasing clouds this afternoon. Last we'll south wind at about 15 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 51 degrees, rain showers, some areas of dense fog as well. That south wind getting up to about 15 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially later in the day. Most of us will stay dry for the most part throughout the day as uh, some sunshine could try to peak out. But again, the storm's arriving later. We'll have highs in the middle 70s at south wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast afternoon chance for thunderstorms. Those will continue in the Sunday temperatures in the lower 80s on Sunday. Lower 70s Monday under a mostly cloudy sky and mostly cloudy on Tuesday. Highs in the upper 60s. Thank you, Devin. That's all for ABC 7 News at Noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. Check out Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6, broadcasting live from Belfast. A fun way to start the weekend. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.